My name's Chris Bro. I call signs KDA YBJ. I got started in amateur radio from my father. So he got licensed a year before I did and had a mobile unit in the car. And we would just talk on the local repeater to people all around. And um, that's how I got started. It's just chit-chatting with people all around the city. The coolest thing I've done is I got to go on the Youth DX Adventure to Costa Rica. I operated as TI Five Star KD8 YBJ in the mountains. And that was arguably one of the coolest experiences I've ever had in amateur radio was just getting to work all these crazy DX, uh, especially like South America and some places that I don't typically get to talk to, uh, just being here in the Midwest US uh, versus being so far south. Uh, and just really the experience of like being in a different country and experiencing the culture, not really speaking the language, things like that, oh, oh. really interesting. So I love Icon stuff. I have an ID51A, uh, it's then my handheld, it's my go-to. I have a IC7200, that was my first ever radio that I used and an IC7300, I, I love the 7300 so much. I love the touchscreen on it, the waterfall display, all the fun features, I really like, I try to do some contesting and I don't do too much, but when I can, I love the voice gear, uh, you know, then I'm not talking the entire okay. content. Okay. Uh, okay. So definitely a favorite 7300. I would say my most memorable was probably, I had my tech for a year and then I upgraded to general. And so while I had my tech, I was doing a lot of 10 meters. So working Japan or Australia, Luxembourg, all these random kind of DX spread throughout the world. Um, those are some of my most memorable. I think my first DX was Brazil. It was Papa Yankee 2, Victor and on 10 meters. The stack's pretty big. A lot of the stuff I do is LOTW or uh, digital now, but paper QSLs are always fun. I, I think my most memorable paper QSL is probably Guantanamo Bay. To show that to some of my friends and stuff. Okay. When I'm like, oh, this is ham radio, this is what it is. They'd be like, well, what are some of the cool places you talk to? And I'll pull up like some of the cards I have from around the US or Europe or whatnot. But I think the, the Guantanamo Bay card usually gets uh, yeah, a few even... cool expressions. Yeah. One area that I've tried to get a little bit more into is satellites. So I think maybe a satellite radio or something that like is, uh, like my, my ID51 that I have. I love doing satellites on it, but it's not duplex. So maybe something like that would be awesome. I think the community and kind of just like meeting new people. Uh, I think it's cool, especially places here at Dayton where I can run into people that I haven't seen in a while and just kind of rekindle old friendships and relationships and just kind of talk about, uh, mm. basically pick up where we were last time. Uh, I also like, maybe I've worked somebody that's over across like the ocean, uh, across the pond, or over in South America, Central America, or up in Canada, or wherever, and I get to see them again. Um, in person to have that like that eyeball QSO quote unquote. So I really enjoy that aspect of it. It's constantly changing. It's okay. not always. I know everybody's like, oh, HF and CW or like okay. AM, like how it used to be. And sure. those are awesome. Don't get me wrong. I love trying to learn. I'm so bad at CW myself, but trying to work on it or getting on AM every now and then. But there's other aspects too, right? You have like your digital modes, you have doing mesh networks, you have all these other aspects and avenues. Uh, that you can kind of explore. And so showing people like, it's not just getting on HS and talking to people. While I find that fun, I know plenty of my friends that really, like some of them are doing uh, aerospace engineering and they're designing like aircraft and stuff. And they're like, oh, for my RC plane that I'm designing to prove this concept, I can use amateur radio to extend the range or I can use different frequencies or things like that. So kind of tying it all together and just showing that there's multiple avenues and there's not like one way to do amateur radio. Right. A lot of what I do, so I'm a college student and I'm the president of our club over at St. Louis University. And so a lot of what we do is we'll get on uh, outside. So like outside the engineering building, we'll set up and do a portable operation sometime. Uh, we have these two really nice directional Yagis for uh, satellite work. And so telling people like, yeah, we bounce signals off satellites and talk to people all over the US or doing stuff when the space station does slow scan, things like that. Being in St. Louis, I think next semester, one of our goals is to go to the Gateway Arch and activate the arch. So yeah, that would be really Ooh, cool, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but we've done photos all around the area. Okay. So that's been something that's been gaining a lot of traction, especially uh, a lot of our my peers want to get outside, especially like now that it's spring and summer. So when it's not the winter and it's freezing cold in St. Louis, we like to you know get out, go to yeah. the arch, set up yeah. the radio, get on for a few hours. So just finding different ways to get outside and kind of show like, hey, we're out and active. Uh, they've been really successful. Yeah.